today's guest is a multi-award winning amateur boxer and the hardest man to find on BoxRec. It's James Arthur Metcalf. How are you doing, James? I'm doing fine, thank you. What about you? I am not bad. So, talk to me about your name and uh, you've had to sort of play around with it on BoxRec, haven't you, so that people can find you? Yeah, so I've had to change a few times because uh, there's a James Metcalf already in Liverpool. Uh, He's James Metcalf. So, I mean, I tried to get my full uh, legal name, which is James Arthur Metcalf, and they didn't allow that because it was still too similar. So I just had to shorten the two first names and then the Metcalf. So, yeah, everyone, well, a lot of people try, probably try and find me on a box wreck and they just can't because they don't know my name. We'll make sure that your name gets yeah, out there. So, I hope so, anyway. So you're a light heavyweight, and you are the James Metcalf. That is coached by Ryan uh, Rhodes. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I'm coached by Ryan Rhodes, but I'm actually going down to middleweight. Oh, are you? Yeah, I'm a, I'm at middleweight at the moment, actually. Uh, I did fight. My first fight was at light heavyweight, but I figured... I did that way really easily. So I thought, oh, we'll go a bit lighter. Me and Ryan discussed about oh, getting lighter. And, um, you know, uh, we thought, oh, he's losing that much weight, a bit dangerous. And we thought we'd try it one time and I've done it. And it's it was fairly, it was quite easy to do. So we'll, I'm going to go ahead with it and we'll fight. We'll keep fighting at this weight. And, uh, yeah. I feel fit and strong, don't feel drained. And, uh, yeah. That's the main thing, isn't it? it? Yeah. So, to be fair, you're only 20, so you have got time to play around with the weights, mm. haven't you, really? Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of time to do that. Um, I mean, I'm, as it, I'm only 20 now, and probably I, like most boxers do, as they get older, they get heavier. They don't really want to put down like like you know getting down to weight all the time they want to like Billy Joe Sanders he's gone up to super middle like and I'll do that eventually but at the moment I am strongest at middle weight for definite fair play yeah nice so you are out on Saturday evening at the OEC in Sheffield uh, yeah. The 25th uh, of September in your second professional bout. I'm guessing that training's been going well um, and mm. looking forward to it. Luckily, I haven't been anywhere near people who's been contracted with COVID because that's been a big issue. Um, I've kept myself safe, he- eating healthy, getting up in the morning at the right time, sleep, going to bed at the right time. Everything's been perfect this camp. Um, I understand the show in the Joshua Uzik um, mm. fight on the same night as your fights. Explain to me how that's going to happen. Are you going to show it in between your fights or, or how's that going to work? Uh, I don't think they'll be casting the whole fight. I think they'll just be casting the main event because obviously our fights are going, our, our fights, which is at the OEC, they'll be the undercard and then the main event will be the TVs. And um, anti Joshua and Usyk. I think that's how they're going by it. It stops people thinking, you know, which one shall I go to? They can actually enjoy both cards and still be with their mates. And actually, it's like sort of two for one, isn't it? I think that's a perfect selling point because pay per view. I've heard something like it's gone up five pounds. It's not. Twenty pounds, I think. It's something on Facebook. I've seen it's gone up in price, and uh, but for tickets that are eighty-five pound, it's not that bad. Like um, twenty-five pounds for pay-per-view, like a meal as well. And once you put all that aside, it's only a fifty-five pound ticket. I know. I don't think that's bad. I think that's pretty worth the money. To be honest, uh, you sold it to me. I think uh, I'm coming to Sheffield on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So you well, were talking about, um, do, well, you have, you are now boxing for your second professional fight. And I know that you turned over in 2019. So obviously you have yeah. had a little bit of a delay with your career because of COVID. How did you navigate that whole period? Um, thankfully, I turned I turn pro. So that classes me as a professional athlete. So I've been able to train it most days through COVID. And I haven't really lost any fitness or anything. I've just gained a bit of weight from not training twice a day and not training every day consistently but I have been training um but yeah as soon as um we came out of lockdown full steam ahead and got this fight and then that it starts the journey starts now yeah I think what has been or should we say the positive thing we can take out of that um that time is a lot of professionals have been able to really hone their skills um mm. you know the basics has that been the case for you my well yeah it has been but my most important uh thing was just to keep fit because i'll bet a lot of people have just you know took a month off two months just doing nothing because they can't do anything and uh like obviously some gyms can't even afford to like keep running through lockdown because uh, they're not getting any money. Uh, so, you know, I've been running, keeping fit, and they've been the two most important things to do for me, just to keep fit. And so it's not as hard when I come into camp. I'm not absolutely dying on my last leg on first day. <laughs> Which yeah. Not nice. Staying focused as well, isn't mm. it? Because it's easy yeah. to... You know, sit on the sofa, I guess. Oh, yeah. I, so when I'm not in routine, I'll get so miserable. I just don't want to... I don't feel like myself most of the time. Even when I'm on diet, I don't feel like myself. But, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. And that's... And then through lockdown, it's just... It's not what I do. Sit at home, doing nothing. I think because you've also been boxing from such a young age as well, it's yeah. in the blood, isn't it? Yeah, it's so routine now. So doing anything else, like not going to training for a week, I'm just lost. I'm just going to work, going home, going to work, going home. It's just not. It's not my. It's not my life. That like, it's not. Yeah. So talking about how long you've been boxing you started as a as a child didn't you um 10 years old yeah yeah talk to me about the route into your first boxing gym you know what led you there <laughs> my first boxing gym was with fred gummersall and uh he sadly passed away about three years ago i can't, I can't remember but i trained with him for five years and then i went to a different gym but yeah, my older brother started boxing before me because he was of age to go to that gym, which was like, I think it was 10 years old. And I, were, I was eight. So he boxed for a year and then I was like nagging my dad. to say, I want to go up there to that gym. I want to go do what my, dad, my brother's doing. And uh, as soon as I turned 10, he got me up there and I've enjoyed it ever since and I've not stopped. And you did really well though, didn't you? Um, just tell mm. us what, what uh, you won in the amateurs. So I've won three English titles. I've won a whole cup and then two British titles. So I've done pretty well. Done all right. You yeah. really have. So, which makes me wonder, why did you turn over so uh, so young? Personally, I, don't, I didn't have a amateur style. And I've been told this as I got older through amateurs, like from 16 to 18, uh, my style started adapting more to a professional style than an amateur style, which is, you know, throwing a lot of punches and trying not to get hit. Whereas I'm 
I took it steady. I like to hunt, hunt them down. I like to be more, uh, how do you say, like, pace yourself. Very, very pace, pace myself and vary with my punches so they don't go to waste. And yeah, I like to pick my punches. In that respect, it is harder then to get the win. It, it doesn't mean to say that you don't have the talent, but it is harder to get the win in the amateurs with that style, isn't it? To be honest, I can't really remember <laughs> many boxers that I fight that I fought that had an amateur style because um, since I was at the higher end of, of the category of t in terms of weight, a lot of the boxers didn't have, you know, a high rate, high work rate. I mean, I probably faced a, a couple, but... Uh, I adapted to their style, kept moving round, couldn't hit. You don't hit a moving target, it's harder. And I, you know, I adapted to that, and that's what I gained from from that. Just adapting to to fight against an amateur style. Talking about, um, you know, you being more of a pro style fighter in the amateurs. Did people try to change you, or did they allow you just to kind of be you? The only place that kind of hindered my style because um um I can switch it so I I can box southpaw and the only gym that kind of hindered that was my first gym with Fred and uh, I think that's the main reason why we left because um we weren't really learning anything new he didn't really want me to box southpaw. Uh, so we moved gyms and then that's really where my southpaw really started taking off or, you know, I started taking it more seriously. I'm a great believer that, um, you know, you should just keep somebody's style and just make little adjustments. I don't think you should try and force somebody to fight in a certain way. What are your thoughts on that? What I've found, it, you know, boxers like who go with Shane McGuigan, I've noticed that they all kind of box the same way, like the wide stance, the wide kind of like, you know, like with David A when he boxed Tony Bell, he, he had a wide stance and he, you could see it coming off uh, Anthony Fowler. I can see similarities. Um, and I think that's not really a way around it because then you become predictable. And with styles, you, you need everyone goes for their own style and what works for them. And changing their style is like trying to, I don't know, it's just. Why change something that doesn't need fixing? Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah, that's what I mean. If they're getting success out of it, then why change it? And the why stance thing, I'm going to be honest with you, um, James. As a coach, it, it it kind of amuses me, especially when I see really, really short people with a wide stance. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, mm. To me, it doesn't make any sense. And and I know the, the, the sort of thoughts behind it and everything, but personally, I think it's more difficult to get shots off, etc. And that's just my personal mm. um, take on it. Yeah. Um, well. Uh, for yeah. some people. No, I agree with you. Making you stance a bit wider making your guard a bit you know loose more loose i don't it might not take a lot to change that but mm. as soon as you get hit in head you kind of you kind of lose it and then you know that saying that once you get punched in the mouth your your plan's gone in it really it's like that, that might be saying they, and, like, and usually what happens is they default back to what they know yeah yeah, and that's literally it. You can you can have a game plan. You can you know come out you know a distance, but as soon as it you, you can't you want to you just want to get in there and do it back, you, unless you keep your calm anyway. Talk to me about one of the best times you had in the amateurs. Oh, uh, one of my favourite ones is um, I got beat in twenty fifteen by a lad in this in the finals and then uh four years later i got this i got the lad 
that beat me at finals. I beat I beat him in the semis by unanimous decision, and I could have stopped him to be honest. And I just went up to his coach and I said, "Do you remember? Do you remember me?" And he just says, "Yeah, I'm always following on you. Everything you do on his foot. I was I was really happy about that. Um, yeah, I think that's my, actually my favourite memory. Uh, you know, that's winning great. titles is really good, like, but it's just it's just a winning ending, isn't it?" But what's great about that is obviously you've gone back, you did the work, and I'm guessing somewhere in here you were determined to beat him. Oh yeah, I didn't want to. Well, I mean, you know, I can't, I can't remember his, his style. I've seen videos of him, and I just thought, you know, he looks good. He looks like he's coming out, coming out, you know, serious. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna be on my A game, and and I came out on my A game, and he just couldn't handle it. So. I, so when I got to end it third round, I thought, you know, this was tough and easy. Well, I, I, yeah, when I got the win, I was really happy. And that's one of the fights I'll always remember. So you are being managed and uh, trained by Ryan Rose. How yeah. did you guys meet? My dad uh, got in touch with him and he said, no, bring him down, we'll have a look at him. And that's how it's gone. So since then, uh, really, really good friends, but good working together. He's a really good coach. Obviously, he's got a good uh, professional pedigree and background. So having him as a trainer, it's like you couldn't ask for any better. That's great. And what about any sort of tips or advice have you gotten from people that have turned over already? Um, did you get any advice before you turned over? Around here, there's not that many pros. So, and I wasn't really surrounded by professionals. I, I mean, I did go to Ingle Gym and, uh, but I mean, they didn't really give me any tips. They just kind of kept to themselves. Uh, I kind of just saw it, took it as like, you know, uh, took it as my own visual advice and took it from there. Uh, just watching what the pros are doing, taking it from that. You went down to the Ingle gym. Was that for a trial or, you know, how did that... Were you considering going with uh, Dominic well, Ingle? I was open, so... But the longer I was there, I didn't really enjoy it. So, I mean, I was there, I think, just shorter a year. And I really kind of didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the atmosphere in there. To be honest, I, I mean, I mean, people were people were nice in there. Not gonna lie, but it didn't. I didn't really enjoy it enough. The thing is, you have to um, be comfortable um, in your environment, I guess, uh, hmm. or, or click with people, I should say, in order yeah. to thrive. Really, should, isn't that the case? you know working with people you enjoy i think that brings the best out in you and training with people as well definitely brings out the best in you because of the competitiveness and um when i'm with ryan uh, you know he makes sure that i'm working hard he's always there by my side making sure i'm working as hard as i can you will be looking at your you know keeping your eyes focused on your fight on the 25th, but the Joshua Usyk card will be also on that night. Have you had a look at uh, the people that are on it and do you have any predictions? No, I don't know anyone that's been on, that's on it. I've just really been concentrating on my own fight. I haven't, had, I haven't really had time to look at these kind of things because when I, when I come home, I just come home to relax and just do things that makes me happy and keeping that mind. Like, don't really want to watch boxing because then it puts me in that mind. Like I'm, oh, you know, I'm gonna get worked up here. Uh, so I keep my mind off boxing when I'm not boxing. When I'm at boxing, that's where my mind is. Yeah, sensible. 
So you're looking forward to it then. Uh, we have yeah. uh, one day to go. What uh, sort of rituals do you have before a fight? None. I just get there, warm up, fight, go home. That's pretty much it. Get some, uh, to, something to eat after and have a good time with the mates. That's job done. That's all I do. Yeah. There's no, I, you know, um, I'm not a religious person. Uh, I just keep to my own, to my own, like, uh, my own faith. Well, not my own faith, like, my own confidence, like, uh, and I stick with that and I stay in my own mind and whatever happens on the night happens on the night because I've trained for that. You really seem to take, uh, you seem to be taking your professional career at such a young age so seriously and um, mm. it is good well, to you've see. Got to. You don't seem hyped by the fact that you're a professional boxer. It seems to me like <laughs> boxing comes first for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. If I didn't have, if I didn't do boxing, I wouldn't have any social media. I don't think I would. And uh, as much as I wouldn't, I'm not bothered about social media. I've still got to promote my boxing. So I mean, that's the only reason, really, why I've got social media. Um, but all I'm here for is like just box and have a good time. I mean. Getting really hyped about it. It's, uh, it's like, oh, I, I mean, I, I will be hyped on the night. I'll be like, you know, you know, I'm really excited for this. But you know, after that, it's then the next fight. When's the next fight? Yeah. I mean, it only, it only, it only lasts that night. Like you can talk about it all you want on, on that night, but then it's over. Then, then it's the next fight. I like the way you think. It's like you allow yourself to enjoy that success and then you refocus onto the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can't, like, I'm not a big, well, I can be a big drinker, but I mean, I, I have one, one night, then focus again. I think everyone should be able to let loose once. And, and I think that's important. Especially everyone in age. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, trying to get down to a weight that's, you know, quite unhealthily light for someone and being so strict that you can't enjoy the foods that you want. And that's really dangerous. And it, it, it really puts, like, it really puts people in a, in a mood. I mean, my diet's not been that bad. I mean, I've been enjoying the food, but it can still, not eating the food that you want to eat can still put you in a mood. It's definitely put me in a mood sometimes. And oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so when after this fight, I'll be able to enjoy some of the things I've been waiting for. It's, it's nice, though, to share that because I don't think some people understand that how, let's say, edgy, when you're making weight and the closer it gets to the fight, and it's not necessarily, well, it could be a mixture, isn't it? A fear, a bit of excitement, but... Mm. The restriction of the food. Oh my gosh. Mm. That's oh, the one, isn't that's, it? That's all that goes through my head. Just get away in. I can have whatever I want after. And since we can do day before weigh-ins, that's actually a really big uh, positive about it as well. And it's say that was the same in amateurs, which I didn't really enjoy. Like, you know, getting getting weird, just having a couple meals that you can digest quick enough before you fight. Yeah, and some people don't actually like to eat too much, but then you've kind mm. of got to replenish. So it's a it's yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's difficult. It has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. a uh, really nice yes. young man. Really nice it's young been man. Good. I uh, I wish you all the luck Saturday night. No, thanks a lot, yeah. Enjoy it, yeah. and uh, thanks very much for giving us your time. No, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the questions and the interview. It's been really good.